Imagine you're in a survival situation and your goal is to find raw diamonds in the wild. What would you do first? And more importantly, where would you even start looking? Well, it's definitely not an easy task and there are many different ways to go about it. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the easiest method to locate rough diamonds in nature and reveal all the geological clues you need to follow to track down these precious gems. You probably already know that diamonds are among the most valuable gemstones in the world. But what you may not know is where exactly they leave traces in nature and how to recognize the geological signs that can lead you straight to these hidden treasures. That's why it's crucial to understand exactly what these signs are and what types of terrain or rock formations deserve your full attention before you even start searching. And I'll also show you how to identify a raw diamond in nature using simple tests you can do at home. Because when it comes to finding precious stones in the wild, knowing where to look is only half the journey. The other half is knowing what a real diamond looks like before it's ever cut, polished, or turned into luxury jewelry. Now picture yourself standing at the edge of a river, your feet in the water. Suddenly you look down and notice a small shiny stone resting on the riverbed, slowly being nudged by the current. It looks like a diamond coming straight toward you. Of course, this is just a fictional scene because in real life, you'll never see a diamond casually floating down a stream. And here's why. The very first sign that a stone could be a diamond is its weight. Even when they're small, Diamonds are much heavier than ordinary rocks of the same size. This means diamonds don't get swept away easily like other stones. Unless the current is extremely strong, a diamond won't travel far. It sinks quickly and gets buried beneath the gravel, especially in what we call alluvial deposits. But does that mean you could find diamonds anywhere in a river? Not quite, but it's not impossible either. There are specific areas within rivers where the odds are much higher, and those are the spots where diamonds and other valuable gems tend to build up over time. These places are known as alluvial zones or alluvial deposits. These deposits can take thousands, even millions of years to form. Here's the logic behind it. As the river erodes the soil over time, it breaks down rocks, often volcanic, especially during heavy rains or floods. The powerful current carries away the lighter particles and pushes the heavier ones along until the water slows down. When that happens, the heavier materials settle while the lighter ones keep moving downstream. And it's in those quiet pockets that the densest gravel collects, including diamonds, gold, sapphires, and even rare minerals like titanium. And if you're thinking this only applies to rivers with flowing water, here's a little secret you need to know. There are ancient rivers that dried up centuries ago, but they left behind alluvial gravel that often hides valuable gemstones. So the real trick is knowing how to spot where the heavier gravel settled. Once you identify those areas, you can collect the material and use the techniques I'm about to show you to increase your chances of finding real diamonds. And the best part? Even if you don't strike a diamond, following this process could lead you to other precious stones like rubies, sapphires, tourmalines, and more, all of which can be just as valuable depending on size and quality. But if you really want to find high-value diamonds in your area, the first thing you should avoid is looking for diamonds directly. Yes, you heard that right. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but think about it. Trying to find a diamond without knowing what to look for is like searching for a needle in a haystack. Your odds are extremely low. However, unlike a needle, diamonds come with natural signposts, and these are called indicator minerals. And that's what you should be looking for first. Because without these minerals, it's almost impossible to know whether diamonds are even present in your region. So is this hard to do? Not really. And I'll show you the trick in just a minute. But first, let's break down what these indicators actually are. Basically, indicator minerals are heavier, more common rocks and minerals that form under the same extreme geological conditions as diamonds. That means if you spot them, there's a good chance diamonds could be nearby. The three most important indicator minerals you should learn to recognize are garnet, ilmenite, and chromite. These are far more common than diamonds, but they show up in the exact same geological environments. 
so spotting any of them is like seeing an arrow pointing in the right direction. Let's start with garnet, especially the Pyrope variety. It's one of the easiest to identify. Pyrope garnets are usually reddish or orange, sometimes darker or brownish. In rivers, they often appear as rounded, faceted, or even cube-shaped pebbles, sometimes polished by water. While garnets can be gemstones themselves, and even valuable, their main role here is to signal a promising location for diamonds. Next is ilmenite, a dark, almost black mineral with a dull metallic shine that can look like polished iron. It's dense, heavy, and typically shows up in irregular shapes with a few flat faces. On the Mohs scale, its hardness is around 6, meaning it can be scratched by a quartz crystal, which is 7. That makes it easy to test in the field using a simple quartz tip or sandpaper. Then there's chromite, which is also dark but with a rougher surface and less shine than ilmenite. It's even heavier, more opaque, and often has an irregular, lead-like texture, almost like raw iron ore. Finding chromite, especially in areas with volcanic history or ancient riverbeds, is another strong sign that you're standing above precious ground. These three minerals often show up together in river gravels and ancient alluvial deposits, and they're way easier to spot than diamonds themselves. That's why learning to recognize them is such a key step in diamond hunting. Here's a practical tip. Every time you spot one of these minerals, mark the location, collect a sample, wash the gravel carefully, and use a set of sieves to isolate the heavier material. Whatever remains at the bottom could reveal even more clues. Or if you're lucky, a real diamond. Now here comes the real secret. Once you've identified the indicator minerals and confirmed that you're in a promising area, it's time to get your hands dirty, or better yet, wet. And while the idea of extracting diamonds from the earth might sound complicated, the truth is, the process is a lot simpler than it seems. All you need is a basic set of sieves, a bit of focus, and some patience. Ideally, you'll want three to six sieves with different mesh sizes, a coarse one for the larger rocks, a medium mesh for mid-sized gravel, and a fine mesh, which is where many diamonds like to hide. Start by collecting gravel from the riverbed or along the banks, especially in bends, deep pools, or slower moving sections. These spots are perfect because that's where heavier minerals tend to settle. Once you have the material, place it in your largest sieve and begin to shake it in a gentle circular motion, letting water flow through the gravel. This movement helps wash away lighter particles like sand and small debris, leaving only the densest material at the bottom. With a bit of practice, you'll start to notice something. Even when collecting the same amount of gravel, the material that settles in the center of the sieve is always darker and heavier. And that's where you'll find garnets, ilmenite, chromite, gold, and yes, possibly a diamond. If you're working in a river with flowing water, the current will help do some of the separation work for you. But if you're prospecting in a dry riverbed or old alluvial deposit, just use a bucket of clean water and repeat the same process manually. Now here's the most critical part. Examine what's left at the bottom of your sieve with extreme attention. Diamonds don't look like other stones. Even the darker or oddly shaped ones have a unique kind of shine a metallic glow like polished steel. One trick experienced prospectors use is to rotate the sieve slowly during the final rinses. This helps center the heavier materials, making them easier to spot. And don't be fooled by size. A diamond weighing just one gram is already a fantastic find. Even smaller ones known as industrial diamonds are proof that you're in the right place. And if you find one, don't stop. Keep digging, keep sieving, because where there's one diamond, there might be more. And believe it or not, finding a lot of small diamonds can sometimes be even more profitable than hunting for a single big one. If you're searching in a river with flowing water, your chances just got even better, because now I'm going to show you how to tell the difference between hundreds of ordinary stones and the ones that might actually be diamonds. When it comes to diamonds found in nature, especially in rivers, it's important to manage your expectations. You're not going to find a perfectly cut sparkling gemstone like the ones you see in engagement rings or jewelry store windows. A rough diamond looks completely different. Most of the time it appears irregular with rounded edges, sometimes even slightly polished, as if it's been sanded down by the river itself. That's because even though diamonds are the hardest minerals on earth, they still get worn down by constant collisions with other rocks. 
So how do you tell the difference between a rough diamond and just another river stone? The first clue is its metallic luster. While most stones reflect light with a glassy shine like quartz or topaz, a diamond has a much more subtle, dense shine. It looks oily, metallic, almost like a polished piece of steel rather than a gemstone. This difference becomes obvious when you compare them side by side. Take a piece of quartz and place it next to a rough diamond. Quartz will look clear, almost like glass. The diamond, on the other hand, looks more opaque, but with a deeper, more intense reflection. Now that you know what to look for in the appearance of a rough diamond, the next step is to test its physical properties, to make sure that what you found is actually the real thing. One of the simplest and most effective tests you can do at home is the sandpaper test. For this, you'll need a coarse sandpaper, the kind you can buy at any hardware store. Look specifically for sandpaper made with carborundum, a material with a Mohs hardness rating of 9. That means it can scratch almost any stone, except for diamond, which scores a perfect 10 on the Mohs scale. To run the test, hold the stone firmly and rub it against the surface of the sandpaper with pressure. If the stone resists without any visible scratches, there's a good chance it's a diamond. But if it leaves behind a white powder or develops scuff marks, that means its hardness is lower, most likely quartz or plain glass. Another helpful test is light refraction. Shine a flashlight or any strong light source on the stone and observe how the light moves through or reflects off it. Diamonds have a very high refractive index, which means they bend and scatter light in a way that's totally unique. Even in rough form, you can sometimes see the light dance inside the stone, very different from the clear and even transparency of quartz crystals. If you have access to a precision scale, you can also compare the weight of your stone to other stones of similar size. As mentioned before, diamonds are extremely dense, and that density is noticeable when you weigh them side by side. Now here's something important. These home tests are incredibly helpful, but they're not 100% conclusive. So if your stone passes the sandpaper test, shows that metallic, oily shine, feels heavier than normal, and has a crystal shape typical of diamonds. Do not rush to sell it. Instead, store it safely and, if possible, send it to a professional lab for analysis. A diamond certified by a trusted gemological lab, like the Gemological Institute of America, can be worth significantly more than one sold without verification. But what if your stone doesn't pass the test? Should you just throw it away and give up your search? Absolutely not. Here's the truth. The same indicator minerals that lead to diamonds often form in the exact same environments as other precious stones, some of which can be just as beautiful, rare, and valuable. Take garnets, for example. Not only are they a clear sign that you're in a promising location, but many garnets, especially pyrrhop garnets, are gems in their own right. When well-formed and translucent, they can be cut and polished into stunning jewelry stones, selling for anywhere from tens to hundreds of dollars depending on size and quality. Another great example is spinel. Though rare, it's often found alongside garnets and chromite. Spinel has famously been mistaken for ruby. Even by experts, it can appear in deep red, pink, blue, and even clear varieties. And some spinels are extremely valuable on the gem market. Then there's zircon, often underrated, but absolutely worth your attention. Natural zircon can show up in heavy mineral zones and is known for its golden, orange, or even reddish tones. When cut properly, high-quality zircon can be surprisingly valuable. And if you happen to be in a volcanic region or in an area with complex geological history, you might even come across sapphires or rubies, especially if the indicator minerals are present in good concentration. It's rare, sure, but not impossible. In fact, chromite, which often signals diamond potential, can also point to corundum-rich environments and corundum is the base mineral for both sapphires and rubies. Even if the stone you find doesn't have high market value, the experience of discovering it, learning its story, and understanding the geological journey it took to reach you, that alone makes the hunt worthwhile. But before you go out searching every riverbed or gravel patch you find, here's one thing you absolutely need to know. Never throw away a stone unless you're sure what it really is. I get it. Identifying minerals can be hard, especially when there are hundreds of different gemstones out there. 
But believe me, some of our subscribers have shared stories where they unknowingly threw away or sold valuable gemstones for just pennies simply because they didn't recognize what they had in their hands. Unfortunately, there are buyers out there who will take advantage of that, paying far less than what your stones are actually worth. That's exactly why I created the Gemology Journey for Beginners eBook, a complete easy to follow guide for anyone starting out in the world of gemstone hunting. Inside, you'll learn how to identify raw diamonds, distinguish them from common crystals, and perform simple tests at home to check hardness, density, luster, and crystal structure, all using affordable tools you probably already have. This knowledge will give you the confidence to know exactly what you're holding before showing it to any buyer so you don't fall into scams or even treat your finds as a long-term investment. Originally, this material was designed for collectors, but we've since adapted it to help everyday people avoid being taken advantage of. And if your focus is collecting, you'll love the exclusive gem identification chart we've included. It covers dozens of minerals, their colors, densities, crystal habits, and rarity levels, perfect for anyone looking to grow in this journey. The full value of the ebook is $29.90, but right now I'm offering a special discount for channel subscribers. Get lifetime access for just $9.99. And the best part? You get a seven day guarantee to read the full guide and decide if it's right for you. If not, just ask for your money back, no questions asked, no hassle. And yes, the download works no matter where in the world you live. Once you click the first link in the description, You'll be taken to a secure page with all the information clearly explained step by step. Plus, by purchasing the ebook, you'll be helping to strengthen this amazing gem hunting community we've built together. The Cabo de Now channel has grown so much lately, and it's all thanks to people like you. We've inspired thousands of people around the world to embrace this hobby, and now it's your turn to be part of it. But if you're not ready just yet, that's totally fine. Just hit subscribe and keep learning for free with us. In the next episode, I'll show you how to spot other hidden gemstones in your area, like jade, rubies, sapphires, and even tourmalines. And some of them can be worth more than diamonds. So thanks for liking and subscribing. Good luck, gem hunter.